Hi everyone, so uh, I'm Felipe Borges and this is my typical advertisement talk for Gnome Boxes. Gnome Boxes is this app that I work with that is a virtualization managing app, so it allows you to set uh, VMs and I always use any lightning talk opportunity to talk about it. Um, so uh, Gnome Boxes is this app that is designed with the idea of uh, easily setting up a VM for those who don't actually have any idea about virtual machine internals, uh, operating system configurations. So Boxes has a database of presets and then it sets all the, the basic configurations for the operating system when the source has been detected and it just performs uh, an installation for you and we are now working towards adding some uh, preference overrides so you can actually uh, customize your virtual machine uh, afterwards. But uh, the purpose of this talk is actually to tell you what's new in Boxes. Uh, I have been trying to pay some technical debt over the years. Boxes is kind of legacy in the sense that uh, it started at the beginning of the GTK three times and then a lot of things has happened, Liu Adwaita has happened, and uh, I've been trying to catch up with a lot of design practices and uh, some internal things in Boxes that I've been improving. But I think we are catching up. Uh, this is some screenshots of the new uh, virtual machine assistant that I worked on. This is still using libhandy, which is the GTK3 equivalent of libadwaita, but uh, the reason why we haven't port uh, to GTK4, which is the modern version of GTK, is because Boxes uses this Spice widget for rendering the, the virtual machine display, and that one is still in GTK3. But uh, by porting this to libhandy, I am already using a lot of the libadwaita's um, uh, patterns and, and ways of implementing UIs, and then by the time I'm going to be able to implement uh, the display in GTK4, then this is going to be a very easy flip. Uh, so I think that most of the UIs are already there, and then it's just the display now that is behind, and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the display soon. But yeah, uh, one of the things I also changed recently in boxes was that we had this uh, wizard assistant, so it was like page, page by page, you would select a file, go to the next thing and select the operating system, next select the resources, and one of the, the refactorings I did internally, uh, because the, the, the way this was implemented before was because of some limitations about the preparation of the virtual machine, but we did some rework to be able to create them in just in a single click. So now if you were to select a file, you just get this dialog which is already pre-filled and then you just go straight away to create button if you agree with all the defaults. So now it's even just one click. Uh, you still can do this uh, overrides. So here we have, for instance, uh, like in the top you have the name of the VM, it's just some name for yourself that you can uh, overwrite. Uh, the operating system box is very nice because uh, it pre-selects the operating system that has been detected, but you can also click there and then there's a search bar and you can select another operating system. So if you, if you want to actually use uh, defaults of another operating system, you can select. If you were to install uh, some sort of obscure Linux distro that is not part of the database, uh, you can select a, a distribution that is similar to it, that shares uh, a same base. So that would work as well. Uh, we also have here this uh, nice expander widget that is for express installs. So express installs are this scripted installation. We support some limited set of operating systems, but we're willing to work on supporting more. So that supports uh, Fedora, uh, Ubuntu, Debian, RHEL, I think OpenSUSE, Windows. So basically you just enter credentials of the operating system, the, the VM that you want, and then when you click create, you just go for a copy and then the uh, box is going to do the install and throw you a notification that the operating system has installed. So if you're doing a lot of VM installations, you just can skip the installer. I, 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 I figured that it can be pretty boring to be doing the whole partitioning, selecting languages, selecting everything. So this is going to just take all those from the host. So if your op host operating system is in English, it's going to install the VM in English, uh, time zones and all the other presets. You just really need to set uh, credentials. And in case of Windows, uh, you can set a uh, product key. Uh, resources, we also have in the database uh, the recommended resources that each distributor uh, decided. So you can also tweak based on what you have, but the the default resources are pretty pretty reasonable. So uh, once your VM is created, uh, you can also tweak the preferences. So this is the part I was talking about that uh, I've been working on expanding. A uh, uh, big criticism Box has had over the years was that uh, once your VM was created, you just couldn't tweak it much. So that's something I'm trying to address without compromising the, the, the basic philosophy of I don't know anything about VMs, so I should not uh, have to learn anything about VMs. So you don't need to get to this dialogue ever unless you actually know what you're doing. But uh, the idea with this dialog is that you can just overwrite the, the preference, enable some custom features like 3D acceleration, 
uh, in the devices and shares folder, you can set a shared folder on your host that is going to be made available in the guest. And uh, for version 45, I'm looking into adding some of the uh, virtual devices so you can change. So if, for instance, you could change the virtual driver for video, for network, memory, and you, you could uh, get into the virt manager camp of uh, overrides. So that's going to be nice. Uh, here in the bottom, uh, we have some specifics about libvirt. So if you are actually like hardcore virtual machine person, uh, you can actually edit the libvirt XML configuration. So then you are just going to get into on your own business, right? We're really not supporting you changing the configuration with the hood. But if you want to do it, you can do it. And this is very convenient specifically because I'm distributing boxes as a flat pack. So you don't actually have direct access to the libvirt daemon that is managing the VMs in the background. So they need to go through boxes because that's inside the sandbox. Uh, in a distro, you actually have libvirt uh, running there on your system, but this is uh, bundled. So uh, for the future of boxes, uh, so I've been working recently with this uh, amazing lib MKS that my colleague Christian has implemented. He uses this QMU debug display for uh, the display, mouse, keyboard, and the screen. And the great thing about it is it's already in GTK4. It, it performs very well with GL. And uh, the idea is that once uh, I am able to use lib M MKS uh, for the display, then, then the whole box is going to be ported to GTK4. So it's going to be replacing the Spice GTK widget. Uh, at first, uh, we're going to roll it as having support in both. And then at, at some point, we're going to deprecate uh, Spice. Uh, I have some, some contributor that uh, kindly has been working on uh, ARM support. I've been uh, also trying to, to get this going, so you will be able to virtualize our ARM systems using boxes easily. Uh, QMU already supports that, but uh, uh, boxes, since it has this, a lot of these pre-setups, we need to do custom ARM pre-setups. So that's uh, what we've been trying to, to polish, and this is going to be great, especially if you want to try mobile OSs or embedded things, and it's going to be neat. Uh, boxes uh, in the flat pack has these limitations uh, about the bridge network. This is something we actually made a lot of progress recently. Uh, so basically, uh, we're going to be able to use uh, the network manager debus interface to set up a bridge network between the VM and the uh, and your host operating system. So you're going to be finally able to SSH into your uh, boxes VMs that are running flat pack containers. You already can do that on the one that is running on on your distro if your distro is doing a good job at setting up the the bridge. I know that uh, Fedora and RHEL do it. Uh, and yeah, USB redirection, there's ongoing work on devices portal. And uh, once that is up, uh, the code in boxes is, is quite trivial. So I think we are going to be able to soon be able to do this. So if you're running the, the, the classic traditional version, you can unplug, you can plug a physical device on your virtual machine and you know, on your physical hardware and get it available on your virtual machine. So webcams and all those things, they kind of work. And uh, they don't work as of now for Flatpak, but this is something that it's, it's finally coming to life uh, thanks to, to the, the work of distro integrations with Flatpak and, and portals. And uh, that's pretty much what I want to do. You can visit gnomeboxes.org. I have their website with documentation. There is also links for you to help uh, and uh, the ways for you to install it in various distributions and also the recommended way is uh, Flatpak from Flathub. So thank you very much.